this pullover, I'll be using a size 5 yarn. This is the Macchiato Cake Yarn by Karen. It's a size 5 and calls for a 6 millimeter hook. I'm using a 7 just to make it a little bit less bulky and it also will work up a little bit quicker. So you can really mix and match your yarn weight and whatever hook size you want. I would recommend sizing up one or two hook sizes just to keep your pullover from feeling really bulky or feeling too thick. We're going to start off by making a magic circle. So I am going to hold my yarn with my first two fingers and my thumb like this. Wrap it around your fingers to create an X. Insert your hook under this first piece of yarn and pull the working yarn through. Turn, pull the working yarn through again. So now you should have a circle. Chain three. So this will be the first double crochet of this row. The chain three at the beginning of the rows will always count as the first double crochet. So we'll make two more double crochets into the center of the circle. So we should now have a cluster of three double crochets counting this first chain three. So this is our first granny cluster. A granny cluster is three double crochets all clustered together. Now we're going to chain one and make another granny cluster of three double crochets into the center of the circle. So yarn over and three double crochets. So now we have two granny clusters, chain one, make another cluster of three double crochets into the center of the circle. So we have three granny clusters, chain one. So now we want to make three more granny clusters separated by a chain one into the center of the circle. So granny cluster, chain one, granny cluster, chain one, granny cluster. So I will meet you back here when I have six granny clusters in my circle. After completing my sixth, I'll chain one. And I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that initial chain three. So I'll find the top, go one, two, three. It can be a little bit tricky to find it first. So just insert your hook and slip stitch. So we've connected our circle. Now that it's connected, Grab that tail in the back of your circle and just pull. This is going to cinch our circle together. So our hexagon is kind of starting to form now. Our next step is to chain three. And then in that space directly under the chain three is where we're going to make our first granny cluster. So we've already got our first double crochet. So we're going to place two more double crochets. This is creating our first granny cluster, and this is how we'll start every row for the rest of our pullover. So we have a granny cluster. Now we're going to find the next space. So we found our next chain one space here. We're not going to chain. We're going to yarn over and place a granny cluster in that next space. All right, so I just placed a cluster. Now we're going to chain one 
and in that same space place another cluster. This is going to create our first corner. So in that space you should have cluster, chain one, cluster. So in this next chain one space over here we're going to create another corner. So we're going to yarn over and place a cluster. Chain one, and in that same space, place another cluster. So now we've made another corner with two clusters of double crochets separated by a chain one. We're going to do the same thing in each of the next chain one spaces. So I will meet you back when I finish the corner before the corner that we started on. So I'm going to keep on putting cluster, chain one, cluster in every space. All right, so I just finished that last corner before the first corner that we started in. So in this first corner, we have our one initial granny cluster. So we're going to go back into that space and place one more cluster. chain one, find the top of that first chain three, and slip stitch. That's how we will end each row. So now is a good point to just double check you have six corners. Now that our hexagon is starting to form, we will continue this pattern. We'll chain three. Go into that space directly below that chain three. And place two more double crochets to make our first cluster. All right, so now we have a side space as our next space. So without chaining, we're just going to place one cluster into that side space. Now our next space is a corner space, so we're going to place one cluster, chain one, one cluster, all in that same space. We've got our corner. Now our next space is a side space, so we're just going to place one cluster. Next space is a corner space, so one cluster, chain one, one cluster in the same space. So we'll continue this pattern of one cluster in side spaces, one cluster, chain one, one cluster in corner spaces, and I will meet you back when we get to that first corner that we started in. Alright, so I just made it to my last side space. The next space is that first corner space we started in, so we're going to make one cluster in that space. chain one and join by slip stitching into the top of that initial chain three. So I'll show you one more row before moving on to how to measure. So we're going to chain three in that space directly under the chain three we'll add two double crochets. In the next two side spaces, we'll place one cluster in each. Chain one, 
Now in the corner, we'll do cluster, chain one, cluster. So I'll keep going all the way around, doing one cluster in each side space, and then cluster, chain one, cluster in each corner space, and I'll meet you back where we started. So I'm back at that first corner, so I'm going to place a cluster. Chain one, slip stitch into the top of that chain three. So that's the pattern we'll continue in making our hexagon. We'll do one cluster in each side space and then cluster, chain one, cluster in corner spaces. So I will show you how to measure so you know how big to make your hexagon. So I have a pullover here that I really like the fit of. So I'm using this pullover as a guide to help me measure so I know how big to make my hexagon. So you'll lay your pullover out flat and make sure the sleeve is flat. So you'll take your measuring tape and measure here pretty close to the armpit which should be the widest part of the sleeve. So mine is about eight inches. So whatever the measurement is, you'll multiply it by two so that we have the circumference that we need. So since mine is eight, I'm looking for 16. So I'm going to keep on adding rows on my hexagon until one side measures 16 inches. So right now, I'm currently at about four inches. So I have quite a few more rows to go. So again, I'm going to keep on going until one side reaches the measurement that you need. So I kept going until my sides are about 16 inches, which was the measurement that I needed so I am going to attach into the top of that chain three like I normally would. Chain three. And then I'm going to continue working four sides. So I'll leave this as a half finished corner the way that we normally would. I'll work one, two, three, four sides and then leave a half finished corner here. And then I will pick back up and show you how to join the sleeves. Um, I would recommend just sticking a stitch marker in this corner so you remember to stop when you get there. So I'm going to work my four sides and then I will meet you back here. So I just finished my four sides. I got all the way to the corner of the fourth side. So I'm going to halfway finish that corner. All right, so I put half of a corner in that corner. So now we're going to fold it to make our sleeve. So now we're going to fold our hexagon to create sleeve. So here is the corner that we just ended on. Here's the corner that we started on and then we worked our four sides this way. So we're going to take the corner that we started on, this half corner, and we're going to fold it to this corner with the right side still facing out. So here are the two sides that we did not add into this row when we did the four sides. So take this corner in this first corner and we're gonna fold them together, keeping the project right side out. So you can see that the sleeve is kind of starting to form here and we've got the body here. The way that you'll know that you did this correctly is the corner that your working yarn is still attached to, the corner we just ended on, is here at the beginning of the sleeve. And then the first corner that is half finished is here at the end 
of the sleeve. So if you have your hexagon folded like this, you're good to go. Now we will work down to join the sleeve and then I'll show you how to add length to it. Don't worry about the size of the body yet. I'll show you how to add length and also add width to it so that you can make sure it fits you perfectly. So we're going to pick back up where we left off in this corner. We half finished it. So we are going to go through the top and insert our hook into the corner space on the other side. So we'll go in through the top like that and slip stitch. Now we're going to yarn over and go into this corner space and finish off that corner by placing three double crochets. So now we're going to find the next space on the other side. We're going to go in through the top and slip stitch. Then the next space on this side, we're going to place a cluster of three double crochets. So now we're going to find the next space on the other side. We're going to go in through the top and place a slip stitch. Now we're going to go into the next space on this side and place a cluster of three double crochets. And this is how we'll continue to join the two parts of the sleeve together all the way down. So this is how it's looking so far. So we'll just keep going all the way down the length of the sleeve, putting a slip stitch into each space on your right side and then putting a granny cluster in each space on the left side alternating back and forth so i'll meet you when i get down to the end to show you how to add length to the sleeve so i just put my last slip stitch here i'm going to go into this corner space and place a cluster I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that chain three. All right, so we are joined all the way down. This is what my sleeve looks like so far. So now we're going to start adding length to the sleeve. So you can customize this. You can make your sleeves as long or as short as you want. You could also taper them. So I'm going to taper the sleeves on this pullover. But if you don't want to taper them and you just want them to be flowy and loose, just ignore the instructions of how to decrease and just keep on going. So to start adding length to the sleeves, I'm going to chain three. And then in that space directly below that, I'm going to add two double crochets to make my first cluster. And then I'm going to work a cluster into each space until I get to the middle of the bottom part of my sleeve. That's where I'll be doing my decreases. I just think it's a little bit less noticeable and just looks better if you do it at the bottom part of the sleeve. So I'm going to use this as a guide and find where the middle of the bottom is. So for me, it's right here. I'm going to stick a stitch marker there just so I can keep track. So I'm going to place a granny cluster in each space until I get there and then I'll show you how to decrease. All right, so I got to 
the middle bottom of my sleeve. So this is where I'm going to decrease. Again, if you want your sleeves to be more flowy and don't want to decrease, just ignore this part. So in this space, I'm going to place two double crochets. And then in the next space, I'm going to place one double crochet. In the next row, I'm going to treat these three double crochets as if they were one granny cluster. So I'm going to put a cluster here and a cluster on the other side when I come back around. So I'll show you that on the next row. But from here on out, I will just place a granny cluster in all of the remaining spaces and I will meet you back at the beginning of the row. So I just made it back to the beginning. I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the chain three of that first granny cluster. Then I'm going to chain three and put two double crochets directly below it to make my first cluster. So to continue the sleeves, we're just going to continue like this. So we will go around placing a cluster in each space, slip stitch to the first one, chain three, and then put two double crochets in the space directly below. If you're not decreasing, go ahead and just follow those steps until your sleeves are as long as you would like them to be. Since I'm decreasing, I'm going to be putting a decrease in every third row. So I just did a decrease in the last row that we did. So I'll do two regular rows of granny clusters, and then in the next row, I'll put another decrease. So for this row, I'm going to go around the sleeve, putting a granny cluster in each space. And then I will show you how we work around the decrease that we did in the previous row. All right, so I just put one granny cluster here. Here's where we decreased in the previous row. So I put a cluster here and then I'm going to put a cluster into this next space. So this is how it should look. I'm going to leave my stitch marker here just so that I can see that this is the general area where I'll be doing my decreases around my sleeve. So just making sure that I don't lose the bottom of my sleeve as I go. So I'm going to finish this row, do one more row, and then I will show you the next decrease. Okay, so here is that first decrease that we did. So I did two rows and now I'm on my third row after the decrease. So I'll place another decrease here since I'm doing them every three rows. So I'm going to place two double crochets and then in the next space, one double crochet. And that is all we'll be doing to decrease. I'm doing every three rows because it makes the decrease a little bit less dramatic. If you are decreasing, I would recommend decreasing this way every three rows or even every four rows if you want the decrease to be even more subtle. So I'm going to keep following this pattern to make my sleeves as long as I need them to be. And I'll meet you back here when my sleeves are finished. All right, so my sleeves are as long as I would like them to be. So to finish off, I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that chain three and single crochet and then cut this to tie off. So I'm leaving a tail long enough to weave in at the end. So this is how my sleeve looks. I'm not going to add any kind of cuff or anything like that at the end of my sleeve. But if you would like to add a cuff, I have detailed instructions on how to do that in my hexagon cardigan tutorial. I'll try to put that somewhere on the screen here, but it'll definitely be down in the description. So if you want a tutorial on how to do the cuffs, you can check there. So I am done with this panel. So now you will do everything again one more time to make the other side of the pullover 
and then I will meet you back here to show you how to add the back panel and the front panels and connect them. All right, so I finished both panels. Now I've got two sleeves. So the first thing we're going to do is add a back panel. So the way that we're going to do that is by adding a few rows to both sides on the back and then joining them down the middle. So you can use the So you can use whatever sweater you used to measure in the beginning to measure how many more inches you'd like to add or you can just try it on and see how it fits and determine how many inches you'd like to add that way. So I'm going to add two more rows to either side because I need about four more inches for it to fit me the way I'd like it to. So I'm going to do two rows on this side and two rows on this side. So I'll show you how to attach your yarn and get started on those. All right, so this is what will be the back of one of my panels. So to begin adding rows to the back, I'm going to make a slip knot. I'm going to put my hook through this bottom corner. Put the slip knot on the hook. And pull through, chain three, and then work two double crochets into that same spot. I'm also holding the tail against my work to weave it in as I go. So I'll work one cluster into each space and then I'll meet you at the top to show you how to turn. All right, so I just made it almost to the very top. I'm going to go into the last space, which will be this corner space here. And I will work a cluster into that space. All right, now I've worked all the way up the side. So I'm going to chain three and turn my work. And now we're going to go back down the back side. So now I'm going to work a cluster into every space all the way back down. So I'm getting towards the bottom here. All right. So now I'm going to place one double crochet in the top of that chain three. So I am only adding two rows to my pullover, but if you want to keep going and add more, you'll just chain three, turn your work, and place a cluster in each space. So then you will just keep going, adding rows up and down the back until it fits you in the way that you would like it to. All right, so I'm going to tie off here. So I'm going to chain and then cut off my working yarn, leaving a tail to be woven in. So now I'm going to repeat that process on the front side of our pullover. So I'm going to attach my yarn in the bottom corner, pull it through and chain three. And then I will repeat the same process that I did on the back side to add two rows to the front of my panel. All right, so I made a bit of a change to mine. I decided to actually do three rows instead of two. So I just finished my third row on the front. So now I'm going to tie off. And I'm going to repeat this process on the other side. So since I added three rows on both sides on this panel, I'm going to add three rows on both sides on this panel, and then I will meet you back here to show you how to join your panels and create the collar. So I just finished adding the rows to expand these panels. So now it is the size that I want it to be. 
So now we're going to join them together. So there are a few different ways that you could do this. You could use granny stitches the way that we joined the sleeves here. I am going to sew them together just because I think that produces a little bit of a cleaner result when it comes to joining the panels, but you can use whatever joining method you like the best. So I have my pullover laying out with the front facing up. So this is the side I want to be my front. So I'm going to open that and I'm going to be working with the back first. I'm going to seam that together first. So we're just going to kind of line the sides up like this. This is where my seam will be. I'll move it up so you can see a little better. So this is my back seam and we're working from the inside. So I am going to start here at the bottom. So I'm going to find that initial chain three and I'm going to go into the back loop. And then I'm going to find the initial chain three on the other side. And I'm going to go into the back loop. And then I'm going to tie that off to secure it. So I'm just going to go all the way up the back seam, going through back loops only until I get to the top. So I just got to this last stitch here. So I'm just going to tie off, right, tying a knot just to secure it. That is what it looks like from the inside. And that is what it looks like on the outsides. We've got a nice seam going down the back. So now that we have attached our panels in the back, we're going to attach them in the front. So before doing that, I'm going to try my pullover on and determine where I want my collar to be. So I'm thinking probably four or five clusters down, but I'm gonna try it on and see what I think. So to join the front pieces together, I'm going to turn my work inside out. So I decided that I want my collar to begin about five clusters down. So I'm gonna take my stitch marker, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm just going to stick it right there just so I don't accidentally keep going. So I'm going to join these sides the exact same way I joined this one by sewing them together back loop only. And I'm going to stop and tie off here where I have my stitch marker and then I will meet you back here. So I just finished seaming the front together. So I've got my opening with the collar here. So now if you want to add length, you can go ahead and do that. I am going to keep mine cropped, but if you wanted to add length, you would do that basically the same way that we added more rows to the side. You would insert your hook, put a slip knot on the hook, chain three, and then put two more double crochets in the same space and then just make a granny cluster into each space all the way around, attach at the beginning, and then keep on going. And you can just go around and around adding rows until you have the length that you would like. So because my pullover is already the length that I would like it to be, I'm just going to do the finishing touches 
So I'm going to start by finishing off my collar. So with my pullover right side out, I'm going to insert my hook. I like to start in the back. So I'm just going to insert it into one of the stitches close to the middle of the back. I'm going to make a slip knot and then place that on my hook. So I'm going to pull that through and then chain one. And now I'm just going to place a single crochet in each stitch all the way around the collar. So these stitches on the very back can be a little bit tricky to work into, but just try your best. It's okay if it's not completely perfect, it won't really be noticeable. So I just made it back to where I started. I'm going to slip stitch into that first single crochet, chain one, and then continue with one more row of single crochet. If you're happy with how the one row of single crochet looks, you can just tie off there, but I'm going to do one more before moving on. So I just got back to the first stitch that I started in. I'm going to slip stitch and then tie off. So this is how my collar looks now. So now I'm flipping over my pullover to start in the back. And I'm just going to do a row of single crochet all the way around the bottom edge just to clean it up a little bit. So I am just inserting into a random stitch back here, putting the slip knot on my hook. Pulling through, chaining one, and now I'm just going to go around the bottom, placing one single crochet in each stitch. So I just got back to where I started, so I'm going to slip stitch into that first single crochet. and tie off. So that is where I am going to leave off. The last things I need to do are just weave in all of my loose ends and I'm also going to steam block my pullover and that should help the collar lay a little more flat when it's being worn. But that is it.